How hard was it for the first black NFL player to get into the league? Well, today, we're going to find out. Fritz Pollard, born January 1894, seventh of eight children in a small suburb in Chicago called Rogers Park, and that's where Fritz called home. In the predominantly white neighborhood, a young Fritz early on found interest in football and that's where he experienced his first bit of adversity in the form of racism. And that's when his mom taught him at an early age that he had to pick his battles wisely, subdue his emotions in order to achieve his goals in the predominantly white world at the time. Cause you really gotta think about it, it's early 1900s, super early 1900s when segregation was at an all time high, civil rights was going on and on. Off. like this is a very bad time not easy time for a young black man especially so we just imagine what he had to go through to get to where he ended you know and little did he know the lesson that his mother taught him helped the most in his career Fritz's first glimpse of being legendary was at the Lane Tech High School where he was standing 5'7", 150 pounds. And that's where a young black man shined in three sports. 5'7", 150 pounds. He was playing three sports and shined at all of them. He was the fastest baseball player in his conference. A three-time Cook County track champion. He was a champion for three years in a row. And he was a top-ranked running back in the country. Everybody was looking for him. Everybody wanted Fritz Pollard. He was on the rise and he was black. I mean, he was causing a lot of attention because you really got to realize around the world where he lived, especially sports was predominantly white. So just picture him taking over three sports. He's, uh, he's black, he's short, but he, he's, yeah. That following 1915 summer, going into college, he gained weight and he got a growth spurt, but he was still a bit undersized, but he was not weak. Do not get me wrong, he was not weak. And plus added to that, his skill was unmatched from any player in the country at the time. So he was just bound for greatness. Fritz attended the University of Brown where he majored in chemistry, but his true heart was on the football field. And as a freshman coming in, the Browns football team was nowhere near where Fritz was gonna take them. They were literally one of the worst teams in the conference. This is a in the making team so just picture his conference getting overtaken by harvard and yale and they have no financial no nothing no help as a freshman fritz came in and took over instantly as a freshman he was literally a leader on that team he was just like a senior basically he was a senior freshman he led that freshman team i mean he led the browns his freshman year to the rose bowl which is the first time in school history the first time that a black man has been into the rose bowl this is this is just huge and also so added on to that, Fritz was literally named the first African to play in the Rose Bowl. Even though he achieved a lot this season, his team came up short in the Rose Bowl, but he made history. History was already done. He couldn't really let that L take him down because he had a new responsibility coming into his life in the form of a son. He has a new son coming into his life in that 1915 season at the end of the year. And that means that following year, his son would be birthed. So he had a lot of responsibility coming on to him because this is a black son he's a black man in a very terrible time to be black like this was hard to live so he's trying to be an athlete this is not even a clear route to even make money yet like no one like it wasn't huge money how it is now like they were getting paid way less so you just imagine that and plus he's black you don't even know if he's gonna get paid the same so it's like a lot of that is going on and the fact is if he's even able to you know so that's all to add on to that in the following season fritz was he was also running track in college and that following season he set a world record a world record for hurdles on the browns track team and qualified for the olympics and was literally an olympic runner and also one of the best college players in the country <laughs> he's, he's amazing he's amazing and also that season he literally made a world record he, he set a world record he made it to the olympics and led his team to be eight and one with 12 touchdowns eight and one with 12 touchdowns and that's the best record in brown university history and he wasn't just like a stat patter this is literally a bad team he's full on carrying them. He's averaging over a touchdown a game. And he literally cemented himself as a legend against games like Yale and Harvard. He beat them. And he was the only one who scored in those games. And guess what? That was the only college, which was the first college in history at the time, to beat Harvard and Yale in the same season. He was also named Walter Cam's All-American First Team. Following that season, Fritz was hit with some more adversity. He was recruited to the military in World War One. That was when World War World War One was happening. That's like I saying that word. World 
War One. World War One. World War One. He was there and he served two years and while serving, he was coaching a whole football team. Lincoln University. He was coaching a whole football team while in the military. Serving in the military. So while in that time, he literally was serving in the military. He managed to get his team to go undefeated for two seasons. The same seasons he was serving in the military. This is outrageous. This is, this is unheard of. But even though it sounds great, it sounds really great like he's just shining and grinding and getting things done. He was in the military not getting paid. He was getting paid like 300 a game. 300 a game. And that's not big money. Like it's doable, but it's not big money. He wasn't making a lot. Cause mind you, they were only playing like 10 games, 9 games. So do the math. And he had to pay for traveling. So he missed a lot of games that season. Both seasons he was in. He missed a lot of games. And he had to buy on multiple accounts his team's shoes and equipment. Because they were not providing them with nothing. Rarely with nothing. And he, he, he even said it himself. He blames the university for that. And that was something they were going through. They weren't providing with nothing. Fritz didn't stop making history. In 1920, Fritz Pollard's dream that he had when he was a child became true. He became a pro. The Akron Pros signed Fritz Pollard. And he was the first black NFL player in history. And this was the most memorable moment for sports in the black coach. In his first season, he led his team to a championship. The very first championship. Because this was the newly founded NFL. So it wasn't the Super Bowl yet. It was called the championship. Yeah, pretty, pretty unoriginal kind of. But it's a championship. And they won it. And he was named the first team all pro and led the NFL in rushing. And literally, he was so good. He was so good that the team Akron Pros signed Fritz Pollard as a co-head coach while still being the running back. He was so good. Look at the camera. He had a great run in the NFL, and after six seasons, he managed to get a ring, a championship win, 18 total touchdowns. But most of his stats were unavailable because they're so ancient, like you can't really find his stats. But I saw he had 18 touchdowns. So he was really doing his thing in the NFL for six seasons. After retirement, he didn't stop doing great things. Four years exactly after his retirement, Fritz literally founded his own NFL team named the Brown Bombers. Shout out to the Browns University. He found his own team, I had a good run with them and then got inducted into the hall of fame in 2005 and that's a great thing for him shout out fritz holler he managed to do the impossible and open up the opportunity for multiple black men to do exactly what he did and now the nfl is 70 percent african-american shout out to fritz Pollard. and you are probably wondering what happened to his son well his son managed to follow in his dad's footsteps with athleticism and literally became an olympic sprinter so shout out fritz Pollard jr and i want y'all to comment down below who y'all want me to do next make sure to like this video because i worked really hard on it make sure to subscribe and join my membership because i have a lot of features on my channel so join that and this was the career of fritz pollard the first black nfl player